Figma recently announced a bunch of new features at their Config 2023 conference, and the first one we're going to take a look at today is Dev Mode. Now, Dev Mode makes it easier for developers to implement designs made in Figma. We're going to take this simple layout that I created and make it a reality in the browser while using the new Dev Mode both within Figma and as the new Figma Visual Studio Code plugin. If you enjoyed this video, check out designcourse.com where you can learn UI, UX, CSS, and more with my custom interactive platform that makes learning fun and easy. All right, so let's get started here. This is the very basic design that I created real quickly just to demonstrate uh, dev mode here in Figma and also Visual Studio Code. So I'm going to link this exact prototype or this design, this Figma prototype, I uh, in the YouTube description here, and then that way you can follow along exactly, especially if front-end de development is something that you're not usually interested in. Um, you can follow along and see how we get this realized in the browser. So the first thing also before that is right now at the time of recording this video, you need to have the beta version of uh, Figma. So I'm using Figma desktop. So if you just type in Figma desktop, you'll be able to find in Google the Figma download page and then there's gonna be a beta option. So the beta option, uh, the actual app icon here in Windows looks like this as compared to the regular option. The beta option right now does give you this. So if you see this right here, this little dev mode toggle, then you know you're working within the right uh, app. So. What we want to do is first, I'm just going to demonstrate uh, switching into dev mode here within Figma. And as we can see, things turn green and, and the inspector doesn't look the same. And, and the way you interact with your elements also looks different. Like by default, we still see all these little uh, things that says like 8.31, 10.06. Uh, very important to understand that this is for developers here and it's just trying to help you get your spacing right. If you click on different uh, elements here, you'll see it gives you some code and you can see right here, we also have this little uh, settings option where we can set this to rem or pixels. Uh, typically, you're gonna be using rem units. Uh, they're, they're not absolute value, values, they're actually they're relative values and that's what you should be, you know, constructing your CSS with for your layout. Set unit scale, this is also important. So right here, set unit scale, 16. So this is the root font size for scaling pixels into CSS rems. 16 is the default value of the font size property that browsers essentially give web pages on like the HTML element. So you wanna leave that the same unless for some reason a uh, developer or you personally just wanna use a different uh, scale because it's gonna use this value right here to determine these values that you're, you see that are showing up here, also font sizes and other stuff like that. Okay, so a developer can come in or yourself if you're trying to work with code and you can start to understand through the Figma desktop app or Figma itself, uh, the web the web base app, um, you could figure out what your spacing and your sizings are through this app. But it's going to be a lot better for you um, if you use something like Visual Studio Code and you use the Figma plugin. So let me show you that real quick. So I'm gonna open up my Visual Studio Code. And this happens to be all the HTML for that design that I just provided. So when it comes to uh, Figma itself, it doesn't export HTML for you. That's something that you have to write yourself and you have to understand how to structure that. So for instance, uh, we're wrapping everything in a section element. We have an SVG element, which is actually the little exclamation red icon that was there. Uh, it's a two column approach. Um, so we have content here. Uh, just with the H1 paragraph and our buttons, these, this right here is going to be a display flex to get these um, next to each other into two columns. So again, just going back to our design, you'll see uh, how, how that's working. Our two column approach, we have an icon here, then all of our content here, and then this over here will be display flex as well to get those buttons situated with each other. So once you have that, that's all good. Um, and then you wanna come over here to extensions and you wanna type Figma for VS Code and this will one will show up. So for me, I've already installed this, but you wanna install that. So click install. And after you install it, you, you'll find this, I, this icon right here. When you click on that, it's not gonna show you this initially, it's gonna ask you to log in. So just go ahead and log in and then it's going to have I, these folders here 
And then right here it says delete video. That's the um, project that I just showed you that it's working on. When you click on it, it's gonna basically load Figma here in this panel within Visual Studio Code. Uh, and then that way you don't have to leave the code editor when you're writing your CSS and stuff like that. So it's just basically a different form, but pretty much the same form uh, as dev mode in Figma desktop itself. So we'll see here, we have a link rel style sheet to CSS main.css, all right? So I already have that uh, created right, oopsie. I have that created right here and you can see it's empty currently. So let's go ahead and use this and figure out, you know, how it's going to benefit us essentially. So if I just click the actual background or the, the frame as Figma calls it, um, it's gonna give us a width and a height. We don't want that for the website background. We don't need that at all because the, webs the website background, is, uh, in terms of the body element at least, is just gonna be based on the size of the device. We don't need that. Um, we do need the background right here. So that's nice. We can click this little copy thing right there. And then that way we can type in a role set body and then we can just type in uh, background. Now I'm gonna take uh, my index.html, click on open with live server right here. Now, if you don't see that, it's because it's a, an extension you can use. Just type in live server up here and install that and then you'll see the option. You can also get it started by clicking go live right there. So if I click that, It'll load up a browser, and here's our huge <laughs> exclamation point, and that's just because we haven't styled anything and controlled it yet. So, with that said, what else do we need to focus on, essentially, for this stuff? Well, we know all the type, we want it to be white, all right? So we could just say color white, all right, simple enough. I also know that I want all of the uh, the fonts here, the type, the font family to be enter. So font family, enter, and of course, if I selected any of this type, it will say font family enter, but you don't have to specify that that property and value on every role set. That would be kind of silly. So you're gonna have to understand some CSS and just you know best practices outside of just relying on what all this you know code is, is outputted from uh, the Figma extension. So outside of that, I also know that I wanted to, since this is just a demonstration, we'll say that this is the website background here um, in this area, but then th this is gonna be just centered horizontally and vertically within um, the, web, the website essentially. So to do that, I know I can just type display grid and place content center, and that will get us rocking in that regard. So it's still messed up. SVG graphics without uh, width and height attributes uh, are always very large. So we'll get that fixed in a second. So right here, this element uh, is the same thing as the section element that I've created here. All right, so when I select this, then we can start writing out the necessary properties for this. Now, if you look down here, it says the layout is 51.625 rems, height is 28 point blah, 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 blah. Typically, you wouldn't be putting a fixed width on a, a modal like this. It'd be kind of like responsive, but for just for the heck of it, we're gonna do that anyhow. We're gonna copy all three of these, and then I don't want an explicit height. I'll let the content inside of it determine the height, and you'll see flex shrink zero is there as well, and if I just look at this, um, can't really tell much of what's happened yet, but we can get rid of flex shrink zero as well. Okay, so now we have a defined width, explicit width that's placed onto our section element. Um, additionally, we could see, now this is something that's frustrating to me, the border radius is set in pixels, even though we have over here, rems chosen, all right? So this is kind of like the same little toggle that you saw in the desktop app. Um, you can also set the unit scale from here as well, which is currently 16. Um, so I don't know why they're not putting this pixel value and converting it to rem units for us. Kind of frustrating, but the way we used to do it in the past is we take your calculator, unless you're using some sort of other external tool or extension or plugin, uh, and you just take uh, 19 divided by 16, and that gives us 1.18 for the corner, the border radius. So border radius would be 1.18, I think that was, rem units. And we also need to give it a background as well so that we can actually see these corners because currently it doesn't have a background. We save that and there we go. If I zoom up enough, you can see we have a background or a corner radius right there. Okay, so with that said, 
uh, we also want to make section a flexbox container because there's two columns in it. There's a column one right here, and then all this stuff is next to it, so that's a second column. So to easily create columns, I know we just put in uh, display flex, and then you're gonna see, once we do that, it's now into two columns. And by the way, the font wasn't loading. I had to import that from Google Fonts over here. Um, all the um, enter, basically, it was not loading correctly. So there we go. So now we're in a two column approach with the display flex. And we also wanna put a gap in. And this is the first time we're actually gonna utilize some of this spacing. So what you wanna do is we take this, this icon right here. And then if we hover over another element, you'll see where it says explicitly 2.25. That means 2.25 rem units. All right, so what we wanna do is put gap 2.25 rem. And then now we are spaced out evenly based on what we have here. Now it doesn't look like it because just how large this stupid SVG graphic is. So let's go ahead and fix that um, as well. So what we can do is take our SVG and if we click on our SVG itself, it's gonna tell you the width, I, the height, and this flex shrink value. If we take all those and just copy them and then paste them right there, we'll see now we're gonna have a correct size, uh, much, much, much better right here. Now we don't have padding worked around inside of this container, so we can get the values for that as well. So you can see if we hover over this, it says 3.06. So that is actually the rem value for the padding on our section. So what we can do is just say padding 3.06 rem right there. So now we can go back and now we have a nice amount of padding. Now, one thing, we're not centered vertically right now because I forgot to put in height, 100 viewport height on the body element. So now it can be properly positioned in here. So now we're getting uh, close, but we can notice we have like, this is down too far, and this is where it helps to understand just you know some, some CSS and why things aren't like aligned properly and such. So now we can take our H1 element and let's focus on that. So we click on our H1 element, it's gonna give us the color, the font size down here, uh, the font family. We don't need font family because we've already specified that. The font weight, yeah, perhaps we could use as well. So I'm just gonna take these three right now for a second and just paste those in. We're gonna get rid of the font family. We're gonna keep the font size. All right, now we still have an issue uh, when it comes to this stuff right here. All right, uh, the, the fact that it's down so far. And that can be fixed by specifying uh, margin zero. So we get rid of any of the margin and now we're much better aligned. Now additionally, this type really doesn't look correct as compared to the actual example over here. We have a lot more line height um, in, in these elements. So let's focus on that as well. We're gonna put paragraph down here and then we're gonna go, go ahead and say this is gonna be font size. And the font size for this one, for the topography is 1.25 rem units. And we also have a line height down here as well. So let's copy these and just paste them in, get rid of the font family. We're going to tab that in. And now we are a little bit closer to uh, matching this up. So we can also get rid of any default margin as well on the paragraph. You can see we kind of have this situation occurring where we need more white space between these elements in order to get this looking more like this over here. So what we can do is on the H1 element, we can say uh, the margin, margin top is the first element um, and then margin right. So it goes top, right, bottom, left. So top, right, or zero, and the bottom to separate us out and give us white space between these two elements, uh, we can click on this, or hover over it rather, you can see it's 2.31. So we're simply gonna say 2.31 rem units, just like that. Save it, go back, now we have accurate sizing as compared to this uh, example over here. Awesome, so let's also take a look at the buttons. So at currently, um, our buttons are, you know, they don't look good and they're all kind of strange looking here and they're the wrong color and we have a little bit of work. So 
They're all wrapped in a container, a parent container called div class of buttons. So let's take buttons, display flex. All right, and display flex, I will pretty much make it look like it was before because they're already uh, next to each other. But we also want to have a gap value between them and a margin top value to separate it from this element right here. So how do we get those values? Well, let's select this, hover over this. It's 4.81. All right, so for our buttons, we'll just say margin top 4.81 rem units. There we go. And then we also want to put a gap between them. So a gap between here and here is 2.25. So we say gap 2.25 rem. All right, so they should be spaced out further, and they are. Now we can select uh, this button right here, and this is going to be a.cta. The class is CTA as defined right there. All right, so for a.cta, we have a few things that we can pull from here. Um, we can pull all this. All right, now let's see what that does. I'm not even looking at the code. I'm just looking what it did here. Okay, it didn't give us a background color. So we can see it says border radius is seven pixels, which we'll, we'd have to convert that ourselves. And it's still giving us pixel values. So if we save this, it should be a little bit more close to what we want, except the color isn't there. So we're gonna do color white as well. All right, and let's get this here and here. All right, and then we just have to get um, rid of this this underline. So text decoration none. All right, we can go back. Yes, delete the video. All right, so it did a pretty good job um, out of the gate for us. The font size, like I said, is actually not showing up there, and that's because we have the font size selected here. So we have to import, um, or copy rather, a, a few of these as well. So I'm gonna paste those right here. Don't need the font family. Font weight we can leave, line height we can leave as well. If we save it, there we go. Now it is pretty much identical to this button here. Now, additionally, we have the final element, which is no do not delete. So that is a class called secondary CTA. So let's do a dot secondary CTA. And then we'll click on it. And it's actually fairly straightforward. I, we have a font size, font family, all this stuff. Let's uh, paste it in. The text decoration um, is already underlined. We don't need to worry about that. Um, if you remove the line height, you might actually affect um, the spacing or the white space around it. So we're just gonna leave that. Font family, don't need that. Um, color, we do need that. So let's save it. And it's almost ready, except it's up too high. It's not kind of centered how it should be. Now these are Flexbox uh, children. So what we can do on this child element is just say, um, let's see, it is align self-center. I'm fairly certain that's the right one. There we go. And now it's aligned up and this is it. So that's how you essentially use the Visual Studio Code Figma plugin. And you can do the same thing, of course, as well, uh, outside of the editor in Figma itself in the dev mode. Um, so it does make it does speed up life a, a little bit better. It's, you still need to understand CSS um, and understand you know, the various CSS properties and how they all work. But essentially, this is um, a nice, you know, quick way to get your REM units um, all accurately and your spacing accurately translated over into the browser. All right, everybody, if you enjoyed that, make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet. And I'll see you all soon with more Figma videos, especially about the recent updates. Goodbye.